So far in, in this radio I replaced just a couple of wires and this main power cord and the wires are actually in, in, in pretty bad shape. You can see that by this wire over here it's uh, literally falling apart, its isolator is, is falling apart. It's completely cracked. It's missing completely on, on some parts, and this was in uh, in power supply for for the filament of of AZ1, which is a double diode. And AZ1 goes here. I will show you that tube now. This is AZ1, and that's a double diode. So it turns alternating current into direct current. I will show you this on schematic where it is. And this is this is the very first part that uh, that I will uh, test now. So my aim now is to test uh, this transformer. It's power supply for for the whole radio. This is where where we get input nets. It's in German. Uh, this is input of uh, 220 volts. There is also uh, other. Um, pins for 110, 25, 220, 240 and I will just reconsider maybe to, to switch it on 240 because this is this is a st standard now it's no longer 220 volts and uh, the first thing I, I will measure is uh, this uh, voltage over here which is for for uh, the filaments of all of the tubes and and for, for the light bulb for the dial, so it should be low. AZ1 is, uh, has a power supply of uh, 4 volts for, for the filament. So this is what I'll check. Of course it's, uh, it's alternating current and what I'm wondering if uh, this transformer, this is it. So this, this is a transformer, if transformer is actually uh, working uh, correctly. Before I plug it in into high voltage, there is a simple way to, to check uh, this transformer. I'll put it on measuring resistance, 200 ohms will be enough. And when I check pins for, for the high voltage, right now it's turned off. There is, um, there is uh, no resistance at all, it's actually infinite. And when I turn it on, I expect some resistance to, to appear here. And there it is, about uh, 20, 22 ohms. Maybe you're wondering why it's not um, like a short circuit. Now with 1.1 ohm, 1 ohm, it's because we have uh, a lot of um, wire in, in primary circuit of, uh, of this transformer. And this is the resistance of, of the primary coil in transformer, which is 22 uh, ohms. I would actually be concerned to see about uh, 1 ohm or actually 0 because 1 ohm is, uh, is, some, is some resistance that we have in, in these wires as well. So next thing that I can do now is to plug it in. I will first turn it off. I will plug it in and then I will turn it on and measure and I will measure the voltage for, for the filament for the heating of the tube just in case I'll switch to to the highest voltage of alternating current that I can measure and this is uh, 750 volts. Now the moment of truth, I will turn it on. I could hear actually nothing. This means that either this transformer is not working or it's been done perfectly well so so it's working excellent actually those here are pins for for the filament we can go to 20 volts as well 4.6 volts is this okay for for the az1 tube it's easy to check just to find specs for for this tube for AZ1, there it is, just to focus on it, 
So as you can see for, for AZ1 it says 4 volts, 1.1 amp. This is when we put, uh, put the tube back. So right now I'm measuring 4.6 volts. This is okay. There is no reason then to, to switch it to 240 40 volts. Maybe it would uh, drop down the voltage a little bit. But so far I cannot see even that switch. It says 220 volts uh, here. This is this is the maximum that I that I have here. So I will check pins for for the light bulb for the dial. It's the same voltage. And that is quite normal. I will show you on schematic now again. Why is that normal? Because it's connected, as you can see over here, it's connected to, to the same wires. So this is it. We have a normally working transformer. We have power supply for the tubes, for, for the filaments, for the heating. And the next thing is to, to place back this uh, AZ1 to isolate this uh, some of those wires because I expect nearly 1000 and more volts of direct current to, to appear over there and then we will see what is, what is the status of uh, direct current. What I did so far is testing this transformer and it has been tested without AZ1. So I tested it without uh, this double diode tube it's been plugged in into 220 volts and it's giving correct voltage in, in secondary coil and it's working uh, quite normally. This power supply cable has been changed. It's completely new now and I will show you on schematic where it is. This is the, this is the transformer and that is the secondary coil where I've been measuring voltage. It's, um, it's quite normal. And now I have put back AZ1. So what I want to do now is to turn it on and first visually check how this AZ1 behaves. And after that, I will start uh, measuring voltage if I hear no sparking or some other troubling sounds. So let's turn it on now. It's been plugged in. Yes. And we will see how it works. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. I will turn it off immediately. You could see how anode plate was turning red. It was shining red. This means that uh, there is probably a short circuit somewhere, somewhere in this radio. So the, way, the best way to check it is to follow, follow the trace from, from the cathode because anode is connected here to the transformer itself. And this is where cathode, which is actually the filament, is going. And I need this point. It's going to the electrolytic capacitor, double electrolytic capacitor, which is, in this case, I know because I have replaced this wire over here, it is that capacitor. If I'm suspecting that this capacitor is uh, malfunctioning, anyway, I first need to, to discharge it. The best way is to use um, to use the resistor and make a short circuit between uh, between negative pole and these two positive poles on uh, on this capacitor. And only then I can measure the resistance to see if there is a short circuit uh, somewhere. Before I measure anything on this capacitor. I will make sure it is discharged completely. I'm just bypassing the chases, actually the negative pole of this capacitor and two positive poles here. Nothing. So I can measure now this to see if uh, there is any short circuit between the chases and the positive poles of this capacitor. It 
it switched to sound so it will beep if there is a short circuit this is uh, this is the mess this there should be a short circuit so it's connected correctly and this is one positive pole it shows nothing and this one shows zero ohms so that one over here is connected with the traces and that should not be the case so this capacitor here is connected directly to the ground and it's something that uh, that we don't want here so i will replace this one now and then i will turn it on and check how it behaves now whatever you do first make sure that it's not plugged in and now we will replace this capacitor it's quite simple i've made this replacement because i don't have a the one like exactly like this in a, in a single case but I, I have two of them and negative pole is uh, connected together so they have now common ground and this is one positive pin and this is another other positive pin so let's take off this this capacitor to turn it on again and to watch first the AZ1 to see if it's going to have that red uh, red heat again but I believe that uh, that we are fine now the radio is plugged in I will turn it on now and watch the tube it started to warm you can see the filament inside it's quite quite simple tube so it's very easy to see its basic principles how it works and so far is looking good and our plate is quite fine it's not overheating anymore and the filament looks heated completely it has probably probably reached its maximum temperature so what is the next step the next step is to measure the voltage of the red current at the output and that would be over here this pin over here this is the cathode and where is that on schematic it's that point over here so now I'm going to measure the voltage here to see what we have now let's measure the voltage I'll set the instrument to 1000 volts this is the maximum it can measure and let's see what it gives to us probably need better connection 540 volts 540 volts on the other positive pole of this capacitor 500 and 36 now this is between those two let's check from the traces zero so one give us zero the other gives us 540 now let's see where the zero is and zero voltage 
we have right right after this coil here and this coil is used to suppress alternating pulses from from the from the transformer from the alternating current and this coil is actually on the loudspeaker so loudspeaker does not have permanent magnet here loudspeaker has electromagnet and this coil is also used as electromagnet for the loudspeaker and as filter for for the 50 hertz here and this is this is the wire that should go should go to to this coil so it's quite normal that in this point we don't have voltage so i need to pull out the loudspeaker from the cabinet of this radio to to connect it correctly with the with this uh, wire and then we will see if uh, high voltage is going to appear here if it does then we are ready to put back one by one of all of the tubes that i have pulled out and we will check uh, first how our low frequency actually audio amplifier is working and if it's working we are going backwards toward the antenna to to inspect all of these parts and to see if tubes are are working correctly if not then we are going to search for the replacement and and so on there are also some capacitors that need to be changed like this one so we will go step by step